Hi guys, Claire Riley from CNET here and we've got a really special treat for the Whovians out there. Today I've got Rob Lloyd, the science buff, Whovian and all-round comic genius behind the new show, The Science of Doctor Who. It's a show that explores the fact and fiction alongside three scientists of the longest running sci-fi show in the world. Thanks so much for coming to join us today, Rob. Well, thank you so much for just building me up a little bit too much. Oh, no, you got you, you got to build up a genius like you. Well, you know? I don't want to say I'm a genius. I'll just <laughs> I'll just let you do it and pay yeah. you later. Look, um it's a really cool show. I'm really excited by, um, by all the ideas behind it. But when you say the science of Doctor Who, I must I must admit I don't immediately think that things like time travel, regeneration, um, a TARDIS that is much larger on the inside than it is on the outside. I don't really think of these things as scientific possibilities. How, well, do, you, how do you explain it? Well, that's, that's, that's my uh, opinion of it as well. When I first got into the idea of this show was, and, and talking with the, the people behind it, RIOs, it's sort of like they're outlandish ideas. That's the great thing about the show. It takes any possibility and takes it as far as they can. But then sitting down with the scientists involved with it and finding out how does this actually work from a fundamental scientific basis, the process of being able to travel, you know, travel forward in time or backward in time, what realities do you need to have? And to actually sit down with a group of scientists and not go, oh, it's just fantastical. They go, okay, well, let's look at it from a realistic point of view. What you need to do to travel forwards in time is actually have a machine that's fast enough and that can actually sustain the pressure of traveling forwards in time. And if you go fast enough at a certain point, you can go, you know, move at the speed of light. And when you're moving fast enough, time slows down. And so that means you can move forwards in time, but you can never actually go back. So you'd have to be really specific in where in the future you want to go and you'd have to really like it there. The thing that's great about the show is that it seems to sort of go through different versions of science and different ideas that are getting picked up. I mean, how, how much do you think the science of Doctor Who has changed over its 50 year history? It's evolved so much. It's 50 years, five mm. decades of advancements, of uh, theories, of ideas, of concepts, of just way out um, radical thinking. So in the 60s there was explora explorations for the first time of cybernetics and replacing human body parts. That was very new with science fiction in the 60s, that's where the cyberpunk movement was first um, developing. And so Dr. Kit Pedler, who was one of the writers on Doctor Who, wrote the Cybermen and created the Cybermen from there. In the 70s, black holes were just named for the first time. And so that was explored in The Three Doctors, which was the 10th anniversary story. Um, in the early 80s, uh, Christopher H. Bidmead, who was one of the script writers, he explored nothing but the latest in scientific theories. He wanted to make the show less funny and uh, whimsical and make it a really hardcore science fiction show. So exploring dimensions and other dimensions and universes and how time works and can be manipulated. So it's always been at the forefront of um, what is being explored in science. As, as kids coming to access the show, I mean, there are some scary elements to the actual Doctor Who series, but the science behind it, you've obviously targeted that as a, at a young audience. Yes. And bringing them into the kind of scientific fold, if you will, why is that Why is that so important? How have you done that? Well, you know, it's, Doctor Who can be scary, but also science can be quite scary as well. And f for me, it, 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 it's a scary concept to try and wrap my head around all these big ideas and big thoughts. So to have a show that is welcoming for people of all ages to come along and go, no, this isn't something that's difficult or hard. It takes a lot of hard work, but there's a lot of excitement and possibilities behind it. So to bring kids in from a, a certain level to go, these are the possibilities, this is what we want to achieve, and this is where it starts. We want them to start asking questions. That's what the scientists have been saying. It all starts when you, a scientist asks questions and try and find those answers. So if we start them asking questions young, that means they'll stay with the love of science all through their life. So that's really cool. And what I love, at the end of the show, we have 20 minutes where they can actually, uh, the audience can meet the scientists, ask some questions, or if they have any Doctor Who canon questions, they can come and nerd out with me. And the scientists just get blown away with how many legitimate science questions they get from, from, from young kids in primary school or high school kids, uh, university students who are fascinated and interested and want to actually find out more about you know, the science of not only Doctor Who, but also the, their world around them. Awesome. And so the show itself, you were talking about audience participation and stuff. 
You've kind of gone a bit smart and savvy and techy with the audience participation. Tell me a bit about that. Well, yeah, we have to keep up with the uh, modern technology because now, you know, Doctor Who's got special effects that actually look legitimate and their mm -hmm. makeup and all that type of stuff is up to scratch. So we've got um, a website that people can access from their smartphones or their tablets or whatever, you know, their androids or synthetic life forms that they bring in. And um, they go to this uh, website on their web browser and questions, uh, we have games and activities where they can directly press a button, it registers within our system and we show it up on the screen. So we ask them whether they want to travel in time, the past or the future. We ask them about what do they think about life on other planets. We also have big games like uh, run or fight, so we have a clip of a companion and finding out whether they run away from a situation or stay and fight. And the big one is Monster Showdown, where we have four of the big monsters. Each of the scientists and myself have been allocated them and we plead the case and the audience decide which is the greatest monster of all time. Oh, and who do you get to be? I get to be the Weeping Angels. Oh, nice. Yeah, That's a good one. yeah, That's a good so. One. The, but yeah, the ones to beat are the Daleks always. Yeah. yeah. Doctor Who explores scientific theories that could happen, that may happen, that, and take it to the furthest possible. Um, possibility and that's what we explore in the show as well what is possible what is possible what could be possible in the future well thanks so much for coming in and sharing your passion about the show it's really great to have you and um, hopefully you'll be able to share that passion and that love with a whole bunch more people awesome thanks Roy. thank you